and now I'll have a friend with me for the rest of the trip out west. Good boy. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and behind me is the County Seat Antique Mall in Benton, Illinois. Not Benton, Kentucky. I have left Kentucky. I am on my way west. I've made this cross-country trip a dozen times, but this is the first time I've gotten a chance to record along the way, so this is going to be fun. Well, look at this little pooch. I picked him up outside of the County Seat Antique Mall. Actually, inside the County Seat Antique Mall. He's Hager. They were very kind. I got him for $30. I think that's a good price for this one. I did not see a lot of dogs because a lot of them were sold through furniture stores and they would have picked birds and things that were a little more heraldic looking and not your family pooch. So these are not as common in my estimation as some of the other Hager figures. It's surprising because it's really cute. So I was happy to get it. And now I'll have a friend with me for the rest of the trip out west. Good boy. Well, here's the other fun things I got at County Seat. It was a quick trip because I got here right before closing time, but for only having an hour, I did pretty well. I spent $120 and I'm happy with everything I bought because in addition to the dog and the two signs, I got this cluster of items here. The fish is a flower frog. It's Jameson's pottery from California. It's the, a very small mom and pop pottery from the early 50s. It's probably the best thing they made. It's a great design. It'll sell well in Florida if it makes it back from the West Coast. The little deer bud vase here. This has colors you would think of maybe as being hull pottery out of Ohio, but this is actually rosemead. Rosemead is something we don't see very often, so I haven't talked about it before. Rosemead was made in the Dakotas, and it was part of a number of small potteries that were done in the Dakotas. There's lots of fuel there because of natural gas and there is good clay and so at a certain point the School of Mines had a ceramics department that made beautiful artware. This piece is a molded piece probably 1930s. Rosemead is a little harder to find and sells for a little more than you might think. I expect this to be worth about 20 to 25 dollars from the 1940s approximately. Chartreuse, well, that's another Royal Hager. Now this would have been considered close to just basic florist line back when it came out, but this one has a little better glazing on it. So that's a good thing because now it's an appealing 50 shape and those colors are very spot on in decorating if you're throwing back. In fact, look how all of this goes together. It's funny how your eye just sort of gets in one place and everything you pick up all matches. This is Murano glass. The lavender is a great color, very 60s. That's going to sell well and fast, I'm sure. It was $15. I thought it was easily worth it. Jocelyn says she'll pay 20 for a good one. And this is Fostoria Heirloom, 1955 to 65, and the pink is one of my favorite shades. It always had these very dramatic pulled or flared aspects to it, so it fits in with swung glass of the era, but it's opalescent, so it catches the light differently. It's very pretty, and I believe that that piece is probably worth about $45. It certainly is in Florida, which is where I'll take it if it lasts long enough. Well, it's this way out for me. I am leaving Benton, Illinois, and on to my next adventure. I should hit Missouri or Kansas by tonight or tomorrow. Hey, everyone. Here we are in Hayes, Kansas at the Antique Mall of Hayes. And there's Hayes as far as you can see. But I'm glad to be back with you. This is day two of my trip cross country, and I only get one stop today, so it's here in Hayes, Kansas. This place has actually really grown. There's a whole bunch of stuff across the freeway that never used to be there. But this is at the end of the freeway exit, 
And Hayes has an antique mall that's been here for a while. I've stopped here several times. I've found things every time. So let's see what there is today. And it's on this with some pretty good painting. It's sort of unusual. The orange and green. And then there's a cat on nest. It says signed. I'm sure this is Fenton. You can see the signature of the artist in there. We are definitely in farm country out here. Everybody is getting into the glow and there are some good pieces here. This one on top, the swung base, is Moon and Stars by Smith. Not a lot of people have seen that in Vaseline, and that's why it's $47.50. This sand pail is going to be from the early 70s, and it's Ohio art. And look at this guy. This looks very reminiscent of Bikini Bottom, or maybe it's the other way around. Everything is derivative, you know. They've got $250 on this, which to me is a collector who loves it would buy for that price. But it is very sweet because it's a Hollywood Regency era, 1960s Italian floral light up table. So inside all of those pods, the light comes up and that's why it's priced at 250. It is a rather special piece as these things go. This case has some neat old advertising tire trays. This one is from the Century of Progress World's Fair in Chicago in 1933. It was popular to give these out to guys coming into garages because tires set you back quite a bit. And why not give something to take home? These were freebies back in the day. These pinups, Vinny and I like pinups, a bunch of people like pinups. These are on blotters. They would take the same artists like Elvgren and Divorce, and I think these are Elvgren actually, Thompson and all of those, and make them into advertising blotters, and they were just meant to be used and thrown away. So now they're very cute and collectible. Don't cost a lot either. You can make a nice collection of these and spend three to five dollars each. On the top shelf here in this caddy, we see a set of eight of the wild turkey glasses these are from the company that did the whiskey. They had a contract, I think, with Libby to make the glasses for them. So they're screen painted with wild turkey on them. And then down here, these are really cool. These are Blanco. They are Winslow Anderson, their first designer from about 1950. And I really like these with the rings and the price looks good. So I'm going to take them out and we'll check them out for condition. Okay, there's just one problem with the Blinko tumblers. Look at this one and the way the phosphates in the water have started to take over the glass. We are in the Plains states, and in the Western Plains, you begin to run into this problem. Florida's another place where water is really hard on glass. So you really have to look for that. It can be cleaned sometimes using CLR or a number of other methods, some of which Crazy Lamp Lady and I were laughing about are not appropriate for viewer awareness, but I do think that in any event it is something that's going to require a cleaning job and I'm not willing to take a chance on it, unfortunately, because they're beautiful. Old fish aquarium stuff is worth a look, but you have to be careful because some of these are not lead free and some of them have paint that is cold painted. The Japanese were not particularly careful about that when they were making these in the 1930s. And as a result, you can poison your fish. So make sure you have one that's got a good overglaze. That one appears to, and it's only, I think I saw $15. That is actually pretty fair for an old one. They look very cute in an old tank. Camark Pottery with the Arkansas label. This is a molded piece, probably made in the 1940s or 50s as a nursery present when some little baby boomer came to this world. Up here we've got the McCoy Cat and the Royal Hager Nautilus, which is a beautiful piece for $35. This is also Hager in this nice purple glaze. I can see why people are really starting to appreciate Hager. These are fakes. Do not buy them. 
my dad took us to the Country Bear Jamboree when we went to Disneyland. It was definitely a dad thing. But dad got his because Treasure Craft made these bears as banks, as shakers, and as a big giant cookie jar. So imagine dad getting roped into having to carry a big heavy cookie jar all over Disneyland without breaking it all day long. Have fun, dad. So this is cheap economy stuff from when it was made around 1970, but it's got that Hollywood Regency look. It has just enough style, it's just enough gold. It's extra shelving in a place people need it, and it's $25. I think if there's a discount, I will take that one. I like this little stand. It looks to me like a 70s thing because of the sort of plasticky looking nature of the tile. But it's got a good shape. It's $75. It'd be good for display. If it was a little less money, I'd probably grab it. I'm just not sure there's enough room in it for me. The top figures here are Hetty Shoup. She was a darling of Hollywood in the 1940s. And they have a good mark. Hetty Shoup, Hollywood, California. And they were generally sets of figures like this in the larger sizes that people really were into collecting. About 30 years ago, a lot of these went into collection, so they're hard to find in good shape, and these do have a little bit of damage. They're priced well at $37.50, though. There are dealers in flea markets and antique stores that merchandise like this, where it's just a heap kind of spilling all over the floor. I used to get excited about spaces like this, figuring there must be a bargain with so much stuff, but I've come to learn that generally it means things are overpriced, they're not rotating their merchandise, they're just throwing new in on top of old, and that's why it's a big heap. For example, this shot glass, which is cute and common, is $9. I get half that for them when I sell them. On the other hand, here's a nice attractively done space and you can walk through it and it's a neat balance of different looks and yet it has a thematic feel to it and I have to say this to me is much more inviting. And I also have learned as a dealer if you display well you get better prices for things because people can visualize how they can use them in their own home. I don't always follow that advice. I tend to overheat my spaces too, but in a more orderly way, I hope. The quilts here are wonderful. There's a lot of quilts in Kansas, and it used to be I would find good deals on them, but boy, they're popular now. This guy is really neat. He's a Pabst Blue Ribbon guy from the early 60s. Hard one to find. These are nickel-plated metal beds. Very thin, probably 1870s. I would say from the casting, very nicely done. Wouldn't these make great fireplace screens? Or even potentially, even though these are older than this, they could go in an art deco hall and be backlit in a way that would really bring because of that repeating ge geometric style. There's a lot of different ways you can use things like this if you have the imagination, and I hope someone comes and gets these. It's They're priced at $325. Here's a whole shelf of childhood fun stuff. Wyandotte Toy Company made the duck. It's a pull toy for very little kids in the late 30s called the Ducky Waddles. And then there's a top from the 1960s. Mystery Wind Up Mallard. We don't know who made that one. They want a lot for it, but it is awfully cool. And here's an old wooden Fisher-Price toy with the bunny. And one more sand pail with a very unhappy clown. That's Misty holding the water gun. This is why people still like Fiesta and Bauer and related makers. Because look how fun and festive this is. Having this on the table is definitely a way to make the food more appetizing, or in my case, distract from it. 1950s color here in the darker green that you don't see as often. The 1930s red-orange. It had uranium oxide in it, so they quit making it in 1941 because of the war. That's why it's a little harder to find. And what a great color. I'm looking for little furniture. I can't really afford any of these pieces, but they're cute. 
this has a mid-century aspect, although I find that tiered tables are harder to sell. I personally like them, but that's because I have lots of collectibles. The lane table is priced at $195. That's a fair price, but not a resale price. And this one's priced at $195. Great color. This is English Chippendale by Johnson Brothers. It's a very striking pattern if you like red transfer wear because it's so loud with the big flowers. Very pretty garden tea style of dinnerware. And then, speaking of my style, here's a little pink flamingo shell dish for $12.50. I imagine with the discount I could get that one. I think I will. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Well, here's a little bit of bonus time. The proprietress of the shop reminded me that they have an outdoor annex, so we're going to go look in there really quickly. Probably big stuff, furniture, leftovers, who knows, but maybe something fun. It says open, right there. These melt together wall art pieces for seasonal items are really popular collectibles from the 60s and 70s now. 20 bucks. You just cannot go wrong with Christmas decorations. If you've got stuff from the 60s and earlier, people are going to eat it up because it just doesn't get out on the market very often. Very cute little Japanese made, $16 for the pair. This Bassett Mayan dresser is really a nice piece. It's priced at $6.95. I think that's a fair price for what it is. It looks great with this modernist display that they have with it. And here we are in the middle of Kansas. You just cannot assume where you're going to find cool things. They are everywhere. And you can see the detail and hence the name. Great mid-century martini set too, priced at 75. I mean, these are fair prices for what it is. Moroccan amethyst. Here's the silver fade set, $20 for a set of four. Seems very reasonable. Well, I've got to say, I'm really surprised by this back room area. Lots of nice old cabinets, garden furniture. This set's priced at 950. I mean, these are retail prices, but if you get the right decorator or somebody who knows or has a place for it, there are people who will still pay for nice antique and vintage furniture. I was hoping this was marked Nam Bay, but I couldn't find it. Early 80s Nam Bay pieces like this are selling for good money if the design is right and the condition is flawless, but that's the problem. Flawless condition, very difficult to find. They usually have surface disturbances from corrosion and tarnishing that really don't buff out well. Okay, I've got to say for someone this is a phenomenal deal. Perhaps you would have to have glass shelves made, but this is an old cabinet out of a school. It's arts and crafts. This was made to suit to the school. I'm sure it was made to fit in a particular notch. You can see the design. Very rectilinear. Some of the big arts and crafts makers like Stickley did commissions out in this part of the country. I doubt that that's a signed commission piece, but it's just great. It doesn't have a top because it was the top of a cabinet, but what a great display for a dealer. You could build a fake fireplace in it and make it into a mantle. It just could have a ton of different uses, and it's only priced at $250. And it even has its original graffiti. Tony was a very bad boy. I thought Midwestern men were supposed to be well behaved. Well, I have to say this place has a tight display. Everything is put together really nicely. It looks like living amongst the things. 
it's a really good way to display if you have the room because it's a way to show how things are used in a home and it also gives an idea of how you can display a lot of things in a collection without it necessarily taking over. Well look here, they've even got Haywood Wakefield, the bamboo magazine stand that is also a side table, the double layered coffee table, and the dog bone handled corner cabinet, which I have for sale in Florida. Really neat to see again these kinds of things appearing in the Midwest. The Ashcroft table there is priced at $2.95. Ashcroft was the name of that particular line, of course. These are Lane Parsons tables from about 1970. Okay, I would look good in that. There we go, I got my Western game on. Okay, so here is a flamingo mirror. This is the less expensive type that you see from that day, because it's only got one. And the one it's got is a little different than the typical Turner. That's because this is by someone else. Litho in USA, copyright Robert, and we lose the rest of his name. It does have a little bit of a crease here, so condition is something of an issue. Florida's my next show season. If I could get it for 50, that's an awfully big discount. I don't like to insult people, but I'm gonna see if they might have room in this because it is not as valuable as the ones I usually buy, but it would be perfect timing for my show season. At some point, the people who silk screened changed over from the pillow covers to scarves and table dressings, and this Kansas piece from about 1960 is a good example of that. And you will see where we are, right smack dab in the middle of western Kansas, is Hayes. So here we've got part of a windmill blade. This definitely has the feel of the west. And I've been missing the west, so it will be nice to start gathering this feeling as I head that direction cross country. Pickled bamboo stand. I showed one of these at Sparks. This one is priced at $129 in a retail location. Oh, Misty, I don't know why it is, but I just can't quit seeing clowns ever since you told me how much you love them. Love them, love them. Misty doesn't love clowns, by the way. They really have this set up more like home interiors, and there's some really nice pieces here. I like this old porch light. This looks like a 1930s cottage style. They want 95 for it, but boy, if you were restoring a nice old house from that time, you might have to have that for that price. Big oak hall tree with a bench seat. And then this piece, wow, this really shows its age and its life. It's got real darkening around the handles where it got handled the most. It was obviously used to prepare a whole lot of meals. It's got appropriate staining. It has the appropriate type of handles for the time. They don't appear to be replaced. This looks like it's late 1800s. This is a dry sink. So it's a sink like a sink, but it does not have water being poured into it necessarily. It could be used to roll out dough. It could be used for other food preparation. I'm sure that people did put oils and other liquids in it to prepare food, and it shows it. Now this is nice. This one's wider and a little plainer in a sense than a lot of these are, which is better for a lot of modernists who want to have a lot of small display. They want 125 for it. That's retail, but again, nice piece. You can find interesting things in the middle of Kansas. And this is a sweet little bridge lamp with the sailboat top. Pretty elemental, date to about 1930, called a bridge lamp because there's the bridge from the base to the light. They can be moved and easily adjusted, which is nice for different varying light around a sofa, for example. So these are popular. They fit into a small space. This one's only $49. We're not too far from Oklahoma in this part of Kansas, and 
one thing that came from Oklahoma were these. This is Grace Tone. This was Grace Frank, the wife of John Frank. She came up with this orbit pattern. See the varying sort of overlaid almost planet-like figures. It was a way to bring some modernism to their line. The pieces are marked Grace Tone, not Francoma. So this is a neat variant for people who like their pottery and she really did, this was her best design. The glazes tended to be different as well. She also designed some of their bottle vases and decanters for the V series limited editions in the 1970s. I've always liked this stuff and I've never found a piece that I could afford. This one's $35 and I think they do sell for that. And that's the reason why I don't own any. This pink lamp looks like it escaped from a Disney movie to be here with us today. I just love that. Look at that base. It is priced at $60. The wiring has been repaired. That actually makes me happy. Uh, if it was a little less, honestly, I would buy it. I think that form is just fantastic. Shade's boring, but that's the original. This little metal tuffet vanity stool is cute. It's priced at 45 That's a fair selling price for these. If I can pick them up at a price where I can price them at 45 I do. Your mother wears army boots. And I'll be in Colorado having adventures in a few days, so we'll see you again from the road pretty soon. This is George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Good to see you all. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.